And there, there we go. We are live. We are live. Hello, everyone who is listening to us. Hello, fearless female founders. Um, yeah, whoever is listening to us, please uh, introduce yourself. Where are you from? Can you hear us well? Uh, if you have already any questions, uh, that today's uh, session is going to be about choosing the right car as an entrepreneur with Dieter Quartier and his car matchers. Say hello, Dieter. Hi, good evening, everyone. And uh, yes, indeed, my name is Dieter Quartier and I uh, started with a, an activity called car matches just a few uh, weeks ago. Um, being a self-employed entrepreneur myself, I want to reach out to uh, other employed, self-employed people, freelancers such as uh, yourself to, uh, well, to help you out and uh, making the right decision when it comes to uh, choosing the right company car. Great. I am just um, taking a second to check uh, if we are online. All right. The usual, the usual procedure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are online. We are live. We are Great. online, and I can see some people already watching. Yeah, say hello. Um, yeah. So before we go into this um, interesting uh, interview, or even a masterclass, should I call it, because it's really about learning how to make wise choices about uh, buying a car. We are going to watch a short video if um, the system allows us. Let's uh, hope so. Yeah, uh, we will do that. And I will um, briefly tell you the story um, of how I got to know uh, Dieter and how he helped me actually to save a lot of money on buying a car as an entrepreneur. Okay, so let's try. I will hide you, Dieter, for a little yep. bit just to show you a video. If you are self-employed, choosing a company car used to be quite easy. It usually was a diesel and the impact of CO2 emissions was rather limited. Today, things are very different. Not only the CO2 emissions, but also the engine type that determines the fiscal deductibility of vehicle-related costs. And not just for companies, also for the self-employed. Your accountant will probably advise you to take a plug-in hybrid. But is that the right choice? But much will depend on the way you will be using your car. So what's the added value of carmatches.be? Well, first of all, we draw up an individual use profile. And second of all, we use real life data rather than theoretic data. On top of that, we are independent, contrary to the salesperson. We only serve one interest, and that's yours. Starting from your profile and your preferences, we select a series of cars which we compare using a professional TCO tool based on your personal user profile. This gives you a clear view on which model suits you the best and it tells you whether your favorite car fits your budget. Of course, we also give advice about different cars and the type of leasing and financing. And if you want, we can take things one step further. We can ask for quotes at the dealers and negotiate the best deal so you save time and money. So visit us at carmatches.be and make your first free appointment now. Now we are uh, going into the masterclass and the interview uh, itself. And as I told you, let me uh, start from explaining you how we met with uh, Dieter and how he helped me to uh, save money on buying a car. Uh, so basically, I um, uh, went into independent statues only this year, uh, somewhere in April, I believe. And of course, as a, an immigrant uh, and not knowing local language, it's very difficult um, to know uh, all the underwater stones that are connected uh, to taxation and the procedure of buying the car um, and actually you know getting in contact with um, dealers and garages and betting the uh, getting the best deals uh, and i believe yeah i was asking the question about uh buying uh the best uh car that suits your business in terms of taxation as well uh, in uh in in a group 
uh, I think like experts in Belgium or something like that. And uh, Dieter replied some of my questions and then we connected and we started discussing. And I realized that he is specialized uh, in cars buying uh, for quite a while now. So he has a lot of experience in that. And we got into several sessions where uh, Dieter first understood what is my situation yeah like mm -hmm. how much i earn uh what kind of car um i want uh how it can be expensed and from that we uh went further and yeah. Dieter not only allowed me to understand you know that i will probably not get 70 or 100 percent uh of um, expense uh, that we usually hope for because in the beginning I saw like okay that I can get 86% back uh, when I uh, buy a car but after some calculations with Dieter we figured that I will only get around 27% and for me it was like whoa yeah it's mm. important to understand you know when when you are a freelancer when you're independent you need to understand how much money you're actually going to spend mm. uh, i will stop talking <laughs> <for now. laughs> too much and i will give a word uh to uh dieter if you already have questions do uh, uh ping them we are able to see them so dieter yep. tell us yeah, so um, I think, first of all, um, Anna, like you explained, it all starts with uh, drawing up a personal profile. Um, it's not because uh, a plug-in hybrid is, let's say, 100% tax deductible that it, may, that it is, uh, per se, the best solution for you. The same with electric cars. Electric cars are also 100% uh, tax deductible, but it all starts with the way you will be using the car. That's one thing. And the second element is, as you mentioned, uh, your personal tax situation. Um, one element that I hear a lot is that people say, okay, it's 100% tax deductible. So it basically it pays for itself. Um, that's not really true. Um, if a car or any, any other business expense is 100% tax deductible, that means that that particular amount that you are spending on the car or anything else, um, on that amount, you're, you, will, you will avoid paying taxes. So that's a whole different situation, of course. Uh, that's, that's one uh, important element I wanted to, uh, to, to emphasize. Um, but talking about saving costs, well, first of all, you have to start with the profile. And second of all, you have to uh, have a look at all the different aspects that um, make up the total cost of your car. It's not just about purchasing the car. There's so many other elements that come into play. Uh, there's the, the yearly road tax. There is the, the tax deductibility. There is the insurance. Uh, there's fuel consumption. There's tires. Um, there's repairs and maintenance. And um, if you want to have an accurate view on how much a car will really cost, well, you have to have a look at all these different elements. And um, that's not easy. Um, it's not for nothing that many international companies, they have a fleet manager on the payroll who figures all these things out. Um, he works or she works together with uh, the leasing company. They work, uh, they, they use uh, special TCO tools. So TCO stands for total cost of ownership. And well, basically, um, this TCO calculation, which allows you a very accurate and personal calculation of, uh, of a certain car in your situation, well, they cost a lot of money. Uh, so they are until today they are actually the privilege of uh, of leasing companies of larger companies but um i have um, developed kind of a a low-key version of such a tco calculation tool that is specifically um focusing on self-employed people and focuses on the elements that are really important without going too much um, into detail so yeah and i think um yeah, we had a, a good experience with uh, 
selecting your car. I think in your situation, we also started with a, a plug-in hybrid, but then I think we soon realized that a, a plug-in hybrid was perhaps not the, the best solution in your case. But I need to interrupt you sure. here because there is an important thing that you have mentioned that I need to um, really clarify. Uh, because before uh, I met Dieter, uh, I was going to um, dealerships and garages and I was you know trying to understand what car um, would suit me best and you know usually I would expect that those uh, dealerships they would help me but mm -hmm. apparently they don't so they will not spend time with you trying to you know mm -hmm. offer you the best uh, solution so as you said that maybe when you're a leasing company, uh, sorry, when you're when you're a big company, and when you're buying a lot of cars, maybe they can do that for you. But when you are like a solo at buying the car, so mm -hmm. they will just simply not take time to mm -hmm. uh, choose the best uh, solution for you. And then they can also confuse you because they just want to sell a car. Exactly. Um, yeah. So when we sit down with Dieter. Uh, and of course, you know, when I was looking at the numbers and the um, expense uh, ratios, electric car made a lot of uh, sense because they are expensed at 100%. Mm -hmm. But when we took um, three cars and we started comparing them, and when I'm talking about three cars, I'm talking about electric, uh, hybrid plug-in, um, hybrid, because there is a different... Exactly difference between hybrid plug-in yeah. just hybrid and a normal car and we took i think the period of five years four mm -hmm. or five years that's yeah. the usual uh, leasing period for for a car we figured out after all the calculations um that yeah electric car wasn't that much more profitable let's say exactly yeah <laughs> in comparison to uh to other cars uh but mm -hmm. you need to look on case by case basis and what mm -hmm. what is the brand of the car what is included into it the tires even <laughs> those kind of things and yeah definitely with a professional like uh dealer you start to realize things you would never come up uh yourself mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, as I it, it's as I mentioned mentioned before. So uh, indeed, it might be really um, uh, interesting at first sight to go for the plug-in hybrid, to go for the electric, because you see the number one hundred percent, one hundred percent tax deductible. But as you mentioned, uh, Anna, um, it all depends on your personal situation, and um, you must not forget, of course, that a plug-in hybrid or an electric car is of course a lot more expensive than a regular petrol car or perhaps even a regular diesel car so in order for the plug-in hybrid or the electric car to become more interesting from a tax point of view well uh, you have to make some serious calculations and and make sure that uh, bottom line it works out and in, in your case Anna, we saw that in, indeed a plug-in hybrid was not the best solution um, the best solution in your case was a hybrid a standard hybrid uh, car taking into consideration the, the co2 emissions and the the tax deductibility in your case but you because you will be using your car both private and uh, professionally so i think we made a distinguish uh, um, i think we, we took 70 percent professional and 30 percent um yeah private more or less so that's these are all elements that you have to take into account to make the right calculation and the might the right uh, decision as to the the type of type of vehicle exactly yeah uh ladies whoever is listening to us let us know if you understand uh this concept i mean uh that you're gonna be using for example your car 70 percent for business and um, thirty percent for your uh, personal needs, uh, and the way you will be able to expand that car is only at the seventy percent that you are going to use it for business. Exactly. This is very important to understand because, mm -hmm. yeah, in the beginning I also thought, okay, I just buy a car and then I expense everything. 
Mm. And we will get all this beautiful 76% um, of tax ded deductibility back. Mm -hmm. But uh, in reality, it turned out to be um, 27%. Mm -hmm. And then what you also need to know that you can expect um, not only the expenses of the car itself, but also petrol, insurance, what else? Well, it's 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 uh, fuel consumption, it's insurance, uh, it's tires, it's uh, maintenance and repair. Yeah. Um, that's all. These are all things that you should uh, look into. But of course, if you're not specialized in these kind of things, well, most of us are not. Then it's difficult to put a number on all these things. Um, that's why the uh, the tool that I'm using. Uh, well, we take professional data for each and uh, every single car that's uh, that's on the market so uh, independent uh, professional data that we that we source and um, these data give you an exact view okay this is what i can expect uh, in terms of budget i need to set aside for maintenance and repair um, if i drive five years for instance and 100,000 kilometers i should look at maybe four or even six tires uh, to put in my budget um, and of course, another um, interesting aspect is that of, uh, of insurance. Uh, that's also something, uh, Anna, that I believe you struggled with in, in the beginning because, um, well, let's say that the banks and the insurance companies were not really willing to, to, to cooperate to, uh, to provide you with the code to, uh, to start with. Yeah, actually, another thing that Dieter um, helped me with is uh, finding um, an insurance a decent amount because um yeah i drive the car from 2012 i believe so i'm an experienced driver but unfortunately um because i was working for companies i didn't have the whole history of driving like no claim so when you apply for insurance they ask you for no claim and i didn't have five years in total uh, even though I have it. <laughs> mm. So uh, the offers that I have received were um, more than 2,000 euros, sometimes even 3,000. So with Dieter, uh, he has found a broker for me and I didn't pay a cent to that broker yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, they offered a very good um uh, insurance proposition which was like 1100 uh, 100 something i believe uh, mm -hmm. and the fee that they charge i think is really really low something like 20 25 euro so i spent mm -hmm. a lot of insurance uh mm -hmm. i this is spent i saved i saved, saved. Yeah. i saved, <laughs> I saved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. a lot of money on insurance and um i definitely saved a lot of money on buying the car because uh well Dieter first negotiated uh for me uh and this was something new for me like i didn't know that you can really negotiate that way that you can bring down the price by five to seven thousand euro um so when uh, Dieter has shown me that it is um actually possible uh, we pushed really hard on negotiation. Mm -hmm. So what we did, uh, we reached out to uh, different dealerships and we asked them for a quote uh, on the same car. Mm -hmm. And of course, the first reaction when you go to them and you tell them, um, look, uh, yeah, can you can you give a discount? Well, at least in my experience, it was like that. They said, we gave you the best price. Mm. But when you come back to them and you tell them, look, I have this quote. Uh, so this dealership offers me this price. Um, if you're willing to offer a better price, I can go with you. And mm -hmm. there was a battle <laughs> between dealerships. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and in the end, I managed to get 7,000 euro discount which was mm -hmm. absolutely which is, which is a lot which is a lot and um i just want to uh, dive a, a bit deeper into that um these are very interesting times um interesting is perhaps a word to say challenging times 
because uh, well, you all know that uh, COVID-19 has uh, shook up our world and has uh, shaken up also the economy and especially the automotive industry is really struggling. Um, the, the past couple of months have been really challenging for the automotive um, companies. They have not be, been able to sell cars, not only the factories, not only the national uh, car importers, but of course also the dealers, the dealerships that uh, need to uh, sell these cars. Well, they have not been able to do so. Of course, that means that many dealerships are now in urgent need of cash. And that is, of course, a situation that you as a customer can benefit from. Um, many of these dealerships, they are really in need of, of liquidity and they are really uh, able and, and not able, they are really willing to, to go deep in their price negotiation as long as they you know, get the deal done and, and, and get, uh, get cash because they, they need it very, very badly. So is today a good time to buy a car? Definitely. Uh, 2020 is for sure a good year to uh, to to, uh, to buy a car, and because of you know the fact that uh, many dealers and many OEMs they um, they they need uh, liquidity, um, and that's as uh, Anna explained. That also means that well, if you go to one dealer, dealer A, dealer B, dealer C for the same car, well, you might um, challenge them and say, okay. Dealer A gave me this price. Dealer B gave me that. Give me that price. Uh, dealer C, what are you willing to uh, to give me as a discount? So, and, and then it turns out that uh, in the case of Fana, yeah, we we got a, a pretty good discount. Discount, especially for a brand new car. It's not a used car. It's just a brand new car. She got it uh, in, in the exact configuration as uh, as, she, as she wanted, right? Uh, so with a specific uh, equipment in a specific color. So yeah, I, I can only tell you if you are um, buying a car or considering buying a car, um, it's it's from a consumer point of view, it's a good it's a good time to buy a car. Definitely. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should say I got lucky with COVID being there. I shouldn't say that. But yeah, true. well, um, <laughs> let's say that there's always winners and losers, and in this case, well. Um, the, the, the lock or let's say that the, the, the power is now uh, more towards the consumer than towards the dealer. So, uh, the negotiation power is, uh, is something that you can now try and leverage, uh, by, uh, by getting a better discount than you, you would normally get when you would buy uh, a car in, in normal times, so to say. Yeah. Um, Dieter, so I will go back to the, um, list of things that we will uh, that we had to cover mm -hmm. just to make sure that we covered everything yep so the first one was how much really you can get back in a tax return mm -hmm. this is something we have covered i just mm -hmm. want to summarize it um once again uh telling you but yeah don't expect to get 100 percent uh, back in a tax return. Uh, it really depends um, on how much you use the car for business and it yeah. also depends on the car itself. So the mm -hmm. hybrid uh, that I have got, I think it's expensed at 71%, but you also need mm -hmm. to consider that it's 71% uh, not of the whole time that you use it, but only 70% in my case 70 percent of the time i use it for business so mm -hmm. okay the next one how to choose the greenest solution while minimizing tax liability yeah so the major element here is uh, co2 emissions um the tax situation in, in belgium is relatively complicated and especially i can imagine for an outsider um that it's it's you know really a maze and it's it's really not not clear at all um well i've been into the i've, I've been working in the car industry in, in belgium and in the the finance and the, the, the fiscal aspect uh, quite a while i understand it <laughs> and i will try and to uh, to um, make it as, as simple as possible so basically um how is this tax deductibility calculated you start from the number 120 and then you take the CO2 emissions of your car, divide that number by two, and that number you have to deduct from 120. That's actually the basic rule. So uh, let's say a car emits um, 100 grams of CO2. 
you have to divide that by two, that's 50. 120% minus 50 means that your car is 70% tax deductible. So that means that of course, that the lower the CO2 emissions, the higher the tax deductibility. So that also automatically means that if you want to go for a green solution, automatically you get a better tax deductibility. Um, best solution tax wise is, as you already mentioned, a, a plug-in hybrid because that goes below 50 grams. And if you go below 50 grams, then your car, your car is 100% tax deductible. And so are, of course, the fully electric uh, vehicles. But of course, no, not everyone has a, the, the right profile to go for um, a plug-in hybrid. That's why hybrid cars, so the non-plug-in hybrid, but the, the regular hybrid cars, such as the Toyota um, Corolla, the Toyota Prius, uh, you have uh, the Kia Niro, you have uh, Hyundai Kona, there are different uh, hybrid models out there. Well, the hybrid models, they have actually a good compromise between low CO2, so quite green cars, and uh, a low purchasing price. So if you want to, let's say, go green as much as you can without paying too much, then a hybrid car is actually a good solution. It is more affordable than a plug-in hybrid. It is a low CO2 emission. It therefore also is relatively green and it um, gives you a maximum tax deductibility uh, or a minimum tax liability. That's uh, basically uh, basically the same. So CO2, CO2, CO2. That's all <laughs> that you should yeah. remember and try uh, to, to stay below the 100 grams of CO2 if you want to um, have a, a maximum tax um, deductibility. Yeah. Another just, element, uh, go ahead. What, uh, what Dieter has uh, said that everyone understands, uh, understand understands that <laughs> so, <laughs> um so you need to keep the balance between uh co2 emissions and how much the car actually costs because as yes. i said in the beginning of um, uh, the interview the master class uh, when you compare the five years period of how much the car actually costs and its uh, um, uh, CO2 emissions and its deductibility, in the end, you end up paying more or less the same just because, mm -hmm. for example, electric car is much more expensive than the standard car or hybrid car, for example. So you need to calculate that balance. You need to see what is the difference there because mm -hmm. in the end it's actually not, not a big. Yep, exactly. So and uh, so the tax the deductibility, that's one element, that's a very big element in the cost calculation. And apart from that, you also have, of course, the the road tax, the annual road tax, uh, which is also CO2 based. So uh, the lower the CO2 emissions, the lower the road tax. And in the case of uh, plug-in hybrids and electric cars, the road tax is even zero. So that is of course a major advantage that kind of um, decreases the price supplement that you pay for a plug-in hybrid. But again, it is an individual calculation. And it's it not a general. It also depends where you live. Right. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because yeah, it's, uh, there's a difference between Flanders, Brussels, and Bologna. So uh, I live in Flanders, and uh, what I just said actually only applies in in Flanders. So uh, the zero road tax um, is is only in the, the Flemish region. Uh, that being said, in Bologna and in Brussels, uh, you pay the minimum amount, which is uh, sixty one point five euro per year, which is also, of course, very low. It's not free, but it's, of course, the, the, the lowest um, amount you can get uh, as to um, car taxation. Um, so, yeah, again, CO2 uh, is very determining in, um, in, in everything that has to do with, uh, with car uh, taxation. And it's about finding the, the right balance between how much a car costs and how much you can save by um choosing one or another powertrain that is more or less co2 efficient or not yeah yeah, yeah and consider also that um electric cars they have powerful um quite powerful engine uh and in mm -hmm. Bologna, i think you end up paying quite high tax for that well 
basically, if it's full electric, it's 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 fine. If it's a plug-in hybrid, then it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So for electric cars, it's uh, it's always the minimum uh, charge, but for plug-in hybrids, uh, it can be a bit more. It can be a couple of hundred euros per uh, per year that you pay in, in road tax. So uh, yes, it is um, something that you should uh, be careful about. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, a final remark in this context as to uh, road taxation, if you consider taking your car in a, an operational leasing, so a full service leasing with everything, uh, all services included, well, then the, the taxation is a lot less interesting um, because then you the, there's, a, there's a different uh, road taxation system for leasing cars than there is for a um, car that you buy yourself or that you finance yourself or the car that you take in a, in a financial renting. So as a side room, should you consider full service leasing, so all services included, be aware that in that case, the, the tax advantages are a lot less. Yeah, actually, this is another thing uh, you really need to consider because there are several buying options uh, in Belgium. And of course, I didn't know about that um, when I started thinking about buying a car. And uh, yeah, Dieter definitely helped me in that and understanding what is the difference between uh, different uh, buying options. There is operational lease, there is the financial rent, uh, there is buying option and yeah, they have um, different kind of uh, benefits. So this is very mm -hmm. important to know. Uh, yes, exactly. so, uh, if you have any questions, uh, do shoot. Uh, I am going to the next point meanwhile. So whether plug-in hybrids are the best uh, solution, we've just answered that question. Exactly. Um, how important it is to look at your personal use profile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that actually has to do with uh, the, the type of powertrain as well. Um, a plug-in hybrid, an electric car, can of course be really interesting in terms of, um, well, not fuel, it's also of course the power consumption, the electricity consumption. But it all starts with the way you will be using your car, that's one element. And the second element is of course, can you charge the car? Because if you cannot charge your car at home or at the office, uh, or you don't have a public uh, charging station in your area where you can easily have access to and, and, and plug your car in, well, then you should basically forget about a plug-in hybrid or an electric car. Uh, a lot of people dream about you know, buying a, a Tesla Model 3 or maybe an electric Mini or now the, the new Fiat 500, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now the new uh, Fiat 500 is also also available as an electric car. So many people are really considering buying electric, but it all starts with, can you charge the car at home? If you don't have your own garage um, and you don't have uh, your own power supply in this garage, well, then I'm, I'm afraid it's, it's end of story. Unless, of course, you have, as I said, easy access to a public charging station. But if you live in Brussels, I'm not really convinced that you will be finding such a, a public charger very easily. If you live in Flanders, it's starting to get better. There are a few thousand charging stations in Flanders. In Wallonia, the situation is also quite, I wouldn't say desperate, but it's not really uh, optimistic. Um, the, the number of charging stations is increasing, but it's not, let's say, um, to that extent that uh, you will find them on every corner of every street. So first of all, can you charge at home? No, maybe not a plug-in hybrid. Second um, element, as uh, Anna mentioned, is of course the way you will be using your car. Uh, a plug-in hybrid makes perfect sense for people who mostly do shorter different, shorter distances. Um, a plug-in hybrid today has an, an, an electric range of more or less 40 to 50 kilometers. So if you charge your, your battery of your plug-in hybrid 100%, you will be able to drive about 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers. Um, so if, you're, if most of your trips are 40, 50 kilometers maximum, perfect. That means that you can drive your car electrically, which is of course the, the goal of, of this type of, of, of car. Um, if, on the other hand, you will be driving mostly on motorways, uh, longer distances, let's say you live in Brussels and you need to be in Liège or in Ghent or in Ostend or in Antwerp, um, and 
yeah, you, you will be usually uh, driving at higher speeds on, on the motorway, then a plug-in hybrid does not really make sense. I speak of experience. I bought um, a plug-in hybrid myself last year. And uh, well, I have a very mixed use. Um, I drive a lot locally. So uh, my local drives are about 20, 30 kilometers. So a plug-in hybrid make per makes perfect sense. But I live at the seaside in, in Belgium and I have to travel to Antwerp and to uh, Brussels frequently. Of course, that's 100 kilometers. That means that 35 kilometers are electric and 65 kilometers are petrol. Of course, petrol is a lot more expensive than, than electricity. So my point is that look at your personal situation. And if it's mainly shorter trips, plug-in hybrid is fine. If it's mainly longer trips, mm, you might have to reconsider. Then again, um, that is why we have this, this calculation tool that um, looks at your personal situation so we can have a, a look at um, what it will this this means in terms of fuel costs and uh, and power costs and yeah it's a very individual calculation and uh yeah the if if a plug-in hybrid or electric car is interesting for you it depends on uh, on the way you use your car basically yeah and you know a turning point for me like deciding for a plug-in hybrid or just normal hybrid was like a mere understanding if i can actually plug it at home and what mm. I have realized, we are we are renting um, uh, an apartment and we have garage, but that means that you need to install the plug-in station in the garage. It's not your garage. Will your landlord uh, landlord allow to do that or not? Uh, all those you know questions can you easily actually plug in your car uh in that garage they're very important and for me it was not an option i was like okay when i have my own house when i have my own plug-in station mm. then we can think about my tesla s or x that i'm dreaming about but for now that's definitely not the best solution yeah 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 okay. also the, the 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 price of electricity varies a lot um the ideal situation of course is that at home you have solar panels and you have enough power production from these solar panels to feed the batteries of your car if that's the case perfect then it's it's a financial business case that is really interesting um if you have to use public charges all the time the price of electricity will be a lot higher of course so here again you have to look at your personal situation can you charge at home can you use your own solar panels or will you just be taking power from the grid or do you need to uh, use public charging stations instead? There is a huge price differentiation, the difference uh, between uh, these, uh, these three different uh, power supplies. So this again is something that you should uh, take into, uh, into account and that we can calculate for you. Definitely. So let's move to the next point. Uh, how you can adapt a finance lease to suit your budget? Yes, I think that's also an exercise we did for you, uh, Anna, in, in your personal case. So, um, in general, a car is written off in five years. So, that means that if you buy a car, uh, you spread the costs of the car over five years in your accounting. So, let's say a car costs uh, 10,000 euros. Uh, and you will be uh, deducting it or depreciating it or writing it off for five years. That means that every year, um, if it's 100% tax deductible, you can um, deduct 2,000 euros per year. 10,000 divided by five, that's 2,000 euros per year. Um, in some cases, let's say you have a really good business year and you have, uh, let's say, earned more money than you expected or you, you just you know, had a really good year, um, it might be interesting to uh, have a look at a, a financial product that is called uh, financial renting. Um, in general, as I said, it's five years. You can choose four years if you want, if you do uh, a lot of uh, miles, miles per year, but in general, it's five years. Well, there is one financial solution, the, the one that is called financial renting, that basically allows you to expense more in the first year. So let's say this year you have um, made 20,000 uh, euro in, in profit. Well, if you don't expense, if you have nothing to expense, then you will be taxed on 20,000 euros. 
uh, at, at a tax uh, rate of, let's say, um, uh, 40%, that means that you will pay um, 5,000 euros in taxes. Well, this, this financial renting allows you to not deduct as the, 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 the example I mentioned before, 2,000 euros, but you can actually inflate this 2,000 euros if you like to three, even 4,000 euros only in the first year. That's possible because um, you can work with kind of a down payment during the first year. So rather than expensing 2,000 euros in the first year, you can inflate this amount to 3,000, 4,000, um, bearing in mind that you, you shouldn't exaggerate, of course. You cannot go to 6,000 or no, that's of course will not be accepted by, uh, by the, the, the federal uh, tax inspection. Uh, but um, so in, in the case of Anna, we also investigated this, this solution. And uh, so Anna, you also preferred to work with a, a down payment as you know, an increased first um, rent. And that means that this year you will be expensing a bit more than uh, you would be expensing normally, thanks to this financial solution called financial renting, which I can only recommend to my fellow uh, entrepreneurs. I've been using this formula for uh, 10, 11 years. Um, so it, 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 the first advantage, as I just explained, is the fact that you can uh, expense more during the first year, which can be interesting if you have a high taxable income. And the second advantage of the solution is that it's very flexible. You can basically adapt the solution to your budget. If you say, I have a budget of 400 euros per month, well, you can actually adjust your financial renting by playing with uh, the number of months, by playing with the, the amount that you use as a down payment, and by playing with uh, the final amount that you will be paying at the end of the contract. So let's say uh, with a standard finance, uh, your amount would be uh, 550 euros. Well, if you use a flexible uh, financial renting, you can actually play with the number of months and with down payment and with the, 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 the final amount. So that you can reduce the 550 towards the 400 euros that you're aiming for. So that's also basically something that we did um, with you, Anna. So uh, you had also a specifically uh, a, spe a specific amount in your uh, in your mind, and so we basically try to uh, adapt this uh, this product to your to your needs. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to mention something which was really important. Oh, yeah, I remembered. So um, yeah, when you go for um, financial. Uh, rent and you will need to choose um, a bank or yeah whatever service that provides that financial rent mm -hmm. and here uh, Dieter also kind of helped me to understand where to go um, and which rate is good because you will be paying the interest of course mm -hmm. uh, and this works the same way as negotiation for the car because um, different banks will um, offer you different um, um, propositions, offers uh, mm -hmm. for financial rent. And you can use the same method. You can use um, different quotes and telling them, okay, this is the offer that they have got from, from a different bank, what you can offer. Mm -hmm. so that helped me uh, also a lot. Okay. Yeah. So one, one final element, if I just may add one uh, one thing. So this financial renting, you can ask a quote at the dealers. That's absolutely possible. Uh, you can ask for a quote at the bank, um, at another financial um, uh, service provider. But you should always know that um, you will probably get the best quote at your own bank. So don't go for the first offer that you get. Uh, the dealer will offer you this this service if, if you ask for it but chances are that the, the best offer that you get is with your own bank because they know your history they know who you are what you do and uh, so they will uh, be willing to give you a better rate than um, than the dealers yeah i would confirm that because i have um, got propositions from dealerships and then i went to the bank 
And I was a little bit scared, actually. Will they give me the financial rent or not? Because as I told you, I started uh, being independent only in April. So I basically don't have any history as independence uh, in terms of money coming in in the accounts, you know? So I was like a little bit worried about that. But um, the way you do it, uh, you actually ask for a financial plan. Uh, from your accountants and don't be scared when I'm talking about the financial plan that you will have to sit down for for a week writing down your financial plan. Uh, it's a standard thing that accountants can do for you. It's literally one pager um, where they list all your uh, income and expenses as well. And then you take the paper, you go to the bank and then they usually approve it. Yeah, in my case, they approved it. So that was not a problem. So it was interesting. Okay, um, we have uh, gone through all the points for now. Uh, ladies, I can see you watching. If you have any questions, <laughs> I know it can be a little bit daunting and confusing to have all this information at once. But if you have any questions, yeah, please let us know. Um, if you don't have any questions, maybe Dieter can, um, you can say a little bit more about how much your services uh, cost and what kind of bonus maybe you have for um, the uh, members of uh, Fearless Female Founders. Yes. So um, basically the way uh, we work is that we do um, online consultant consultancy sessions um, of uh, one hour, one hour and a half maximum. And so I think with Anna, I spent uh, two or three sessions of one hour and a half, more or less. Um, so the way we work is we, we first of all start uh, with a, an orient, orientation questionnaire. So uh, I get a, a good view on your personal situation, on your preferences, on how you will be using your car, on your financial situation, etc. Um, the first conversation is, is very important because it allows me to get a, a clear picture of what you want and what your needs are and what your budgetary uh, restrictions are, etc. Uh, in the second session, we, could, we dive a bit deeper into um, the, the actual cost comparison between different uh, types of, of cars so that we can uh, have a look at uh, what the result is bottom line comparing between a plug-in hybrid or hybrid or electric car any car you like um, and of course using your personal profile your way of using the car to look at the best solution for you and then in the third step um, yeah it's it's about uh, choosing uh, two or three cars and then comparing them uh, which suits your needs best um, and in the case of Anna, well, we also uh, went to uh, to the dealers and asked them for uh, for quotes. So that's uh, an add-on and an extra service. Um, so the, the the basic fee that we ask is uh, two hundred and twenty-five euros. So that's uh, that covers uh, more or less four hours. So uh, it's it's two hours, two hours and a half of online conversation uh, and uh, explanation. And of course, I have some behind the scenes as well. So uh, that's that's the fee that we ask, 225, including uh, VAT. Of course, this fee is 100% tax deductible because it's a business expense. So um, let's if you are taxed at uh, at 40%, then basically the, the the fee is not 225, but it's uh, more or less uh, 150 euros because 75 euros you will get back. You will, you will be getting back uh, through your taxes. Um, that being said, because uh, Anna was uh, so, uh, let's say, willing uh, and uh, um, sympathetic enough to help me, uh, she was actually my very first customer and uh, she has learned me a lot. She provided me a lot of feedback, uh, which was very useful for me. She also gave me some guidance on, on my um, uh, uh, marketing approach, etc. So uh, as a return uh, in favor, I, uh, I'm willing to uh, give you a uh, 50% discount um, for the participants in this uh, this, this masterclass. Uh, if you promote uh, car matches through your own uh, Facebook profile, so um, you can go and have a look uh, on uh, on my Facebook page, which is uh, car hyphen matchers dot be. So car hyphen Matters of BE. Right. And uh, so if you feel like uh, reaching out to me and if you believe that I can help you out with uh, choosing the right car for you, well, I'll, um, I'll give you a 50% discount uh, so long as you uh, 
you know, promote car matches on your own profile and uh, yeah, spread the word. So instead of uh, 225, you get a 50% discount. So that makes uh, 112.5 euros, excluding VAT, um, which of course is tax deductible. So it's in, in real life, it's, it's even a lot less. So don't hesitate and um, well, just give it, a, give it a try. It's actually, can you imagine like 112 euro for saving, like in my case, is probably 8,000 euro if you think about insurance uh, and yeah, helping me to bring down the, um, uh, the price of the car. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's literally nothing and you have such a clear understanding of what car uh, you need to get. And actually I forgot uh, to mention that Dieter was so kind actually to, to find the cars for me, like different models, <laughs> bring them to me. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know that this car exists and I actually like it. So that was really helpful. Uh, we've got a question Dieter mm -hmm. from Sarah. Uh, the dealers um, do often have an option that you can buy the car at the end of the financial rent period or not. Mm -hmm. If you go yes. with a bank loan, the interest rate is lower, but they do not have the option that at the end you can choose to take the car or not. Well, um, basically in the case of a financial renting, the, the product that we have been discussing before, um, you always have the right to purchase the car and um, the, the legal minimum percentage to purchase the car at the end of the contract is uh, 16 percent so one six percent um, you have the right to do so so if you take a financial renting um, there is always the option it's not an obligation there's always an option to buy the car at this uh, predetermined uh, percentage it has to be 16 percent minimum but you can increase this percentage to 20 percent to 25 percent um, why would you do that well the higher the the final amount so the, the the amount that you can purchase your car at at the end of the contract the lower your monthly installments so let's say you have a standard amount of 500 euros and you want to bring that down to 400 euros per month well you can you can do so by increasing the final amount that you have to pay um so you can increase it to to 20 25 sometimes even 30 percent um bear in mind that if you do so that the interest rate will be slightly higher um, so if you take a standard financial renting uh, the interest rate will be lower it will be about three percent today um, if you go with a financial renting with an increased um, um, f um, purchase option at the end yeah that you they might increase the the interest rate towards four percent um to cover an extra risk so that's uh, that's something that you should know so it's it's not an obligation but it's definitely an option um if you take a finance uh, lease uh finance rent finance lease uh in both cases you always have um the option to buy the car okay thanks for answering the questions uh ladies if you don't have uh, questions anymore uh we are going to wrap up um i have posted uh, the link to um, Dieter's Facebook uh, business page under uh, the video in the comments uh, so you can follow it and you can share it uh, on your profiles to get this crazy discount for me it's like absolutely crazy <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope there will be a lot of uh, people uh, interested and uh, that I can give a lot of discount because uh, the more the merrier of course and uh, well, I'm a startup, so um, uh, any new customer is, of course, more than welcome. So um, I'm really excited to uh, to see the business uh, develop, and uh, yeah, I hope to uh, to reach out to you and provide you with uh, with some, some guidance and some uh, some tips and, uh, and advice. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Anna, we also got a, a question from somebody who had a question about bike leaks um it is perhaps not really uh within the scope of this uh, this master class but then again it's also about mobility um so we had a question from somebody who asked if it is interesting as a self-employed uh, entrepreneur to uh, to lease a bike um yes and no um if you buy a bicycle 
on uh, for professional uh, reasons. So if you buy it with uh, money from your company, um, the bike is 100% uh, tax deductible in any case. Um, so whether you lease it or you, you buy it or you finance it, it's, it's 100% uh, tax deductible. So that makes it really interesting as, a, as an investment. Um, why is bike leasing so popular in Belgium? Well, it's, it's mainly popular in Belgium because it is kind of a perk. It's kind of a benefit that companies give their employees um, on top of a company car or independent from a, a company car, it doesn't really matter because for the, the company, it's really interesting tax wise. And for the, the employee, it's also interesting uh, because you get a benefit without being taxed for it. So um, if you get a company car, you get taxed on the private use of the company car. The company gives you um, uh, a bike, an electric bike or a standard bike uh, in the shape of a lease contract. You don't have to pay benefit in kind on, uh, on that. So actually that's the reason why bike lease is so very interesting for larger companies with a lot of employees. But for self-employed people, bike leasing as such and I don't really see the, the advantage over just buying the bike or, or financing the bike with a, a standard finance contract. So I hope that answers your, uh, your question. Yeah, I hope it answers indeed the question. It was um, uh, Paulina who asked it. Uh, Paulina, I hope you're watching uh, the video or will uh, watch it later. Okay, um, before I'm going um, to say goodbye to uh, all of you, there is one more bonus I have mentioned um, um, when I was uh, promoting this masterclass. And this bonus is a VIP uh, ticket to um, Global Woman uh, Summit, which is happening on July 10th to the 12th. So there will be a lot of amazing speakers there. There will be um, uh, Kim Kiyosaki, there will be the uh, founder of uh, Global Women Speaking. There will be some presenters actually from Belgium. Uh, Great. The, uh, yeah, um, the, not the editor, the founder of uh, Together Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm offering one free ticket. I pay for it. Uh, I have one VIP free ticket. So uh, uh, if you leave a comment on uh, the business page of Fearless Female Founders, I will ping it um, under this video. Uh, I will choose uh, the best review and you will get that free ticket for this amazing event. And now I'm going to say thanks for everyone who was with us for all the questions. Uh, Sarah, Paulina, thank you for the questions. Uh, Dieter, thank you so much for your time. For all thank you. It was my pleasure. Uh, for me, it was definitely very useful. I hope for listeners it was uh, useful as well. And we managed to do it in one hour and then fly it. <laughs> yeah, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So thank you so much. And I will see you next time, ladies. All right, see you. Bye. Bye-bye.